Hello, my name is Paul Bemis. I'm the president and CEO of Applied Math Modeling. Applied Math Modeling is a company that provides simulation software for data center thermal modeling. We model the airflow in the data center to try to give people an understanding of where the inefficiencies are in the data center and how to improve the thermal performance of the data center by managing the airflow more effectively. Our product is called CoolSim, and this week we introduced CoolSim 3.2 which is a new release of the software that adds many of the new features that we think are going to make this kind of simulation more cost effective, easier, more accurate, and overall more effective. So I'd like to show you a little bit about CoolSim 3.2 and what it's able to do. So here on the display we have uh, the way CoolSim comes up. It comes up as a standard uh, data center where we can pick the kind of room we'd like to look at. We can model a raised floor data center, we can model a non-raised floor data center. We can model a raised floor data center with ceiling return or a raised floor data center with room return. So today we'll just model a standard raised floor data center with room return. Set the specifications for the room to get the height and width correctly. You just enter parameters of the room size. Uh, 50 feet in one direction, 50 feet in the other. It doesn't have to be square. It can be uh, anything we want it to be in terms of size. So we set this one up to be 50 by 50, and then we begin to lay the room out. To lay the room out, we have a series of elements in the center called cracks, computer room air conditioners, racks, which are the equipment racks, vents, blockages, general blockages like underfloor cable trays or overhead cable trays or pipes or cable bundles, baffles, and cable cutouts. So first, let's drag some cracks into the room. So here's my first crack. I can move it anywhere I like. Cracks are modeled a couple different ways. You can either set them up yourself using user-defined parameters, uh, or you can pick from a library that we have of equipment. So I'm going to pick from the Liebert library. And in the library, we have all the equipment that you could possibly ever want to see from the Liebert Corporation. Every piece of it's in there. So we'll pick a FH529 and put it in the scene. Now, in terms of specifications, we're able to model that crack as uh, standard performance data, which allows you to take a look at the performance of the crack as a function of return temperature. Uh, or you can model it as cooling capacity, constant cooling capacity, or temperature drop, or constant supply temperature. We'll choose performance data for this one. We can also model this with uh, turning vanes on. And we can also set the height of the turning vane to be whatever we like. And once we have a crack in place that we like, we can simply use the Control D function to copy it and replicate it and move it to the other sections of the data center. We can Control D it, move it to the other side of the data center. Once we move it over there, we're going to want to change its orientation of flow direction using a simple mouse command. Now we have flow direction correct. To model racks, we simply take the rack tool and drop it in orient the rack in the correct direction. There's our first rack. This is a rack row of five racks. And the way we model them is to model them as an average heat load per rack. It defaults to four kilowatts. We can change it to be whatever we want. That is one method for modeling it. But most recently in this release at 3.2, we've also added something called a rack builder tool. A rack builder tool allows you to open up the rack and to pick which rack in the row you want, click off average load, and begin to look at specific servers. Here I have a library of Dells in place, and I can just simply take the Dell and move it into the rack by simply dragging and dropping them into place. I can also do gaps. I can model the effect of gaps or blanks in the rack as well, and any kind of server that's in my library as well as UPSs and other things. This is a new feature of 3.2, and it allows you to take the level of detail one step further than we had with average watts. Over here on the right, we have the specifications for each one of them, and we've modeled them under worst case conditions. Each one of these library elements has maximum load built into it. However, I can go into a given server, click on it in the rack row, go over and derate it to bring it down to something that's less. Here I'm going to derate by 50% to an update, and it drops the kilowatts in this particular rack down low. Server and rack is updated successfully. So I can put the equipment in the rack, I can derate it to move it down, and I can do that rack by rack. 
I said okay, it's now going to fill the rest of the rack with a blank because it uh, has no gaps there and it's going to assume they're all blank. Okay, and now this rack row contains one of the racks that has specific equipment in it. The rest is average watts. I can simply duplicate that rack if I use that rack a lot to another location, change its airflow direction, and now I have another one exactly the same. There's always a 3D view that we can switch into here that allows you to view this in 3D. If I bring up the 3D viewer, I'm able to see these racks as they were, and you can see I have the gaps uh, in those racks just like uh, I had them. One of the other features we've added in this one is the ability to do crack failure analysis. So I can turn on my crack failure analysis and enter the number of runs I want to make. And this allows me to switch the cracks off in a particular order and then submit these jobs all concurrently so that I can see the effect of what these jobs are going to have. I've picked six trials here. I've switched cracks off for each one of these trials and I can submit these all at once now, have them all run concurrently, come back with a unified report it shows you what the output looks like. For purposes of time today, I'll pick one that I've already run to show you what the output looks like. So here's a job that I've run. Now I've already submitted it, and I'm going to now take a look at the output. The output of the CoolSim application comes in the form of HTML reports. And you see here I've run five trials. Trial zero is with no cracks off, and then I've gone around and shut each crack off individually. Uh, using the, that tool I just showed you, the crack analysis. If I take a look at trial one here, I first get the 3D view. I also, however, get these uh, very high quality thermal maps that show me what's going on in this rack and show me just exactly what kind of temperatures I'm facing here. This is a very high quality 3D view that I'm manipulating here on my laptop. I'm using just a simple laptop to do this today. And I'm able to look at temperatures, I'm able to look at maps in the, in the data center of, of temperature at specific heights. Here's a map at six feet. I'm able to manipulate, view. I'm able to make very high quality output images of this, including JPEG and EPS, as well as VRML outputs. I'm able to look at temperature clouds, such as the average temperature cloud in the room. This is an isothermal surface of constant temperature, showing us what, where the areas of this temperature, 75.5 degrees are. I also have uh, animations here in the X direction. I have animations in the Y direction. We have uh, path lines from the cracks back to the uh, from the racks back to the crack units, and from the crack units uh, to the uh, to the floor tiles. This particular image, you're noticing two vortices go right here. This is a bad thing. This is going to mean very low pressure here, and you're probably having a flow problems. So in fact, that is where I'm showing hot problems right there as a reason. So you go back to my rack inlets, you'll notice they're hot right there. Let's take a look. To scale up and take a look at our rack inlets, and you'll notice they're hot right there. It's my rack thermal maps. Look at the heat. It's correlated to the vortex. Right. So this is, uh, this is our CoolSim application. This is how it runs. This is how it works. Um, we've introduced uh, some new features, including the uh, ability to model cracks, the ability to model racks more specifically, the ability to model ducts and diffusers, and the addition of the active tile to this particular uh, scenario. We've also made improvements in our output capability and fixed a lot of uh, bugs and made some general user improvements. So I want to thank you for your time. Uh, enjoyed presenting it to you. If you'd like to hear more about it, go to our website, uh, www.coolsim.com. It is with a K, K -O, o S I M on the website. The product is with a C, C O, -O S I M. But uh, that is where you'll find more information. Thanks.